ray tracing, RTX, DLSS, buzzword nonsense or worthwhile addition to your gameplay? At first, that question was easy to answer. With a lack of available titles to use it on and a price premium that scared off a lot of buyers, RTX was the butt of many a meme. Times are changing though, so it's time to re-examine both the value proposition and capabilities of GPUs like this one. Introducing Thermaltake Tough Ram DDR4. Are you a man? Does your wimpy computer need more memory? Do you also like speed? Tough Ram is built for you. Tougher than that steak you cooked and faster than your sister on prom night, Tough Ram is available in 3600 megahertz kits and is optimized to take your PC from girly to gnarly. Also for women, because we don't discriminate. Check out the links below to learn more. At the unveiling of NVIDIA's 2000 series graphics cards and Turing architecture in August of 2018, the prefix RTX replaced the venerable GTX, which had stood unchanged for 10 plus years. Even before the launch of the GTX 280 in 2008, NVIDIA utilized the GTX nomenclature in cards like the 8800 GTX. So what gives? Why the change? RTX is NVIDIA shorthand for ray tracing, a technology that has existed for some time, but was previously not available to mainstream PC users. To be fair, it was so resource intensive that rendering out single frames of Pixar movies that needed it took 11 hours. So making the transition over to rendering real-time gameplay in an ATX mid-tower was a steep hill to climb. The fact that NVIDIA had managed to cram this capability onto a consumer graphics card at all was a big deal. But at launch and for a long time afterwards, these features were largely a bust. They weren't able to be leveraged except in like a few benchmarks. And they inflated the cost of the GPU so badly that the top end RTX 2080 Ti is now $400 more expensive than the previous 1080 Ti. But there is definitely hope. More and more titles are now being released that can take advantage of this extra processing power, making powerful cards like this Zotac 2080 Ti Amp Extreme an actual worthwhile investment. Today, let's take a closer look at ray tracing technology and what it can actually do for you. When most people hear ray tracing or even RTX on as Nvidia has popularized, they immediately think of reflections. This is because the initial marketing campaign focused almost solely on how shiny metal surfaces looked or how you can see your own reflection in a puddle on the ground. But ray tracing is a lot more broad than that and actually refers to realistic lighting effects. When a light source in a scene casts off rays, they will follow a logical path and strike objects in that scene as they would in the real world. And then as a result, they strike the camera or your rendered field of view. This can dynamically change based on your point of view, the intensity and shape of the light, particle interference, and other factors, and can influence how we see colors, reflections, and shadows. With rasterized lighting, these things are predetermined. So the game is coded to show you a shadow of a tree, but it doesn't necessarily know why it's showing you that shadow of a tree. So when the tree disappears off the screen, even if the shadow of the tree or the reflection of the tree should still be in view, it disappears also. This is called screen space reflections. Ray traced reflections exist no matter where the tree is, on the screen or off the screen, because the point of light is still casting illumination onto the tree, whether or not you're looking at it as it would in the real world. What this leads to is a much more realistic lighting environment all around, as objects and scenes are lit the same way as you see them in everyday settings. I'm not entirely sure developers were actually ready for this though, as the number of titles supporting RTX features trickled out starting with Battlefield 5. Now there are actually several hugely popular titles where you can click that RTX on checkbox, including Minecraft, Metro Exodus, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Control, and even Quake 2. The latest huge release on this list is the latest Call of Duty Modern Warfare, where devs chose to take advantage of more realistic ray traced shadows throughout the game. Seeing as this might be a game that people might be looking to upgrade their hardware in order to play, let's see if we can spot the differences in gameplay between an older GPU 
and this beast right here. A fairly common setup for someone who built themselves a baller rig about four years ago, I guess, would be something like this. This is an Intel i7 6700K, 16 gigs of DDR4, and a GTX 970. A capable machine, to be sure, and on the CPU side of things, I still think you're probably in pretty good shape. A video on that specifically is coming soon, so get subscribed so you don't miss it. But the GTX 970 is starting to get a little long in the tooth. And even playing at 1080p is a struggle with modern games, especially something like Modern Warfare. Here it is running on a mix of settings, mostly normal, and you're getting about 65 to 70 frames per second. It's certainly playable, but here are some interesting examples of what rasterized shadows are and how they behave in game. So here's the first scene on the Piccadilly level. And the first thing that I see when I walked up the street here is the shadow on the ground of this car. Now keep in mind that the light sources that might be causing this shadow to appear are over here, over here, and then behind the car. But the shadow itself is very clean and crisp on the ground. The line is just so straight. And then as we back off, we could actually go around the car and look over here at the shadows being cast by this planter and this table. Now, again, we see very clean, clear lines outlining the entire chair, the table, the planter. Everything looks almost perfect. Yes, there, there's a little, little bit of fuzziness at the edge of this shadow, but for the most part, everything is perfectly outlined and perfectly placed on the ground. And that's a little weird given how dim the light is here and how far away the source that is causing the shadow to appear is. This isn't the way you necessarily see things in real life. As we walk into this store, again, we see objects casting shadows. Now, I picked this one in particular to look at because we have, this is the primary source of light that's gonna cause a shadow to appear, but we also have light coming from above. We have this light source over here and then light sources here. But again, we have a very clean, crisp shadow being formed on the ground from this chair. Same thing can be said for this table and then the plant as well. Everything is very clean and you could clearly make out that this is the plant on the ground. The, uh, the love seat also is casting perfect arm shaped uh, uh, shadows onto the ground from the light source. The, despite the fact that this, this plant is being lit again by multiple different sources from multiple different angles, but everything looks like it's just a pinpoint of light that's gonna light this from one side and cause this perfect shadow to appear. Somebody's shooting at me. Who is shooting at me? I don't even know. And then let's take a look at the mannequins. Same thing with the mannequins. We have this, this kind of like amorphous blob of a shadow that is formed on the wall here, despite the fact that this, this mannequin has contours and shapes. Same thing over here. This is just kind of like an oval on the wall, despite the fact that, eh, stop shooting at me. I'm trying to do a demo. Anyway, shadows on the wall don't look great. Shadows on the floor also look okay, but definitely could be better. Next level to take a look at is the clean house level. And right off the bat, we're gonna take a look at the shadow coming off of this dude. And the light source is back here. And again, very clean, very crisp shadows. As we slide over, see this guy, he's got some night vision goggles on his head. And that light source over there is causing like a, a perfect shadow on this on this uh, fence gate here, which looks, it looks a little bit odd. It looks like he's, like an, it looks like E.T. looks like E.T.'s head right there, right? Doesn't it? No? Okay, let's move inside. All right, we are inside. That woman is being taken prisoner. And the shadows from the island and the chairs, again, they're basically perfect. They're the same lines of the geometry of the table itself are reflected right down onto the floor in the form of this shadow. And again, this is the point of light. So, you know, while this, I guess this is a little bit closer to the object that it's illuminating than some other light sources we've looked at here. And maybe this is a little closer to what you might see in reality. Again, they're just so clean. Like the shadow is just so straight, which is just not the way things look in the real world. Last map, the embassy. 
As we move inside the embassy, this is going to be a good scene to examine because of all the different lights in the ceiling here. But as we move over to the chair, again, we see the same thing as we have before. Very dark shadow, very clearly defined shadow. This guy here on his phone, probably shouldn't be on your phone, dude. It's kind of a crisis. He's casting the same kind of shadow, very clean. And uh, as we move through, you can see that everybody who's running around has the same kind of very clean, very well-defined shadow. Same thing with this, uh, this table over here. And then uh, as we move to the stairs, oh, take a look at that. That's not how that should look. So we've got a light up here projecting down onto this railing, this obviously see-through railing, and it's just projecting a, a block, a blocked light onto the ground. Not very natural looking. Four years is a reasonable upgrade cycle for most consumers when it comes to PC hardware. So you've been saving your pennies and it's finally time to upgrade to a 2080 Ti. Zotac sent over this beauty for use in this video and I wanna thank them for being a part of it. This is their Amp Extreme, one of the premium board partner models out right now. Not only is this going to allow us to boost up our frame rates through the roof versus our 970, but we'll also be able to turn on all the eye candy, including obviously RTX features. So let's go through the menu and crank some things up. So this is quite a difference on our test bench, that's to be sure. The thing looks pretty awesome and it's certainly a lot more powerful than our 970. So let's hop right back into the Piccadilly map and check out our settings and then we'll take a look at what the differences are. So if we go over to graphics, you can see that we are on, we've, we've changed everything to high settings or ultra settings and everything is enabled basically, including DirectX ray tracing enabled right here. This is exactly where we started off before. So let's take a look at the first thing that we saw, which was the shadow from this car. And right off the bat, you could see how this, this shadow blends into the other shadows as we move further from the light sources. And the outline of the shadow on the ground is not necessarily as crisp and perfect as it was before, because that's how shadows actually look on the ground. They look a little fuzzy. And as you move around the car, move back to this cafe setting, the planter, the shadow from the planter, again, gets a little bit uh, diffused as we go further back and then it kind of fades away. The shadow from the chair doesn't look like a perfect representation of this chair on the ground because this light source is so far away that it casts a, a soft shadow at first and then it just kind of fades away. And this is, it, this is dynamic, it changes with the lighting and it, this is the way shadows look in the real world. Let's go take a look inside of that store and see how the shadows from the chair look. So here is that same store, and as we approach the chair, this looks so much different than it did before. This light, this light, this light, and this light are all combining to make this soft outline of a shadow. Of course, you're going to get the harshest shadow from this light source, but because there is other light in the room, the edges of the shadow aren't necessarily going to be perfect and clean. Same thing with this table over here. Yeah, you're gonna get the shadow being cast onto the ground, but it's gonna look a little fuzzy around the edges. The plant, the primary shadow from the plant, the primary light source that's lighting this plant is directly overhead. And it makes sense that the shadow then would be around the base as opposed to a perfect plant-shaped shadow coming off of the plant like this. Same thing with this love seat, I guess this is. The arms are casting a separate shadow out here. Let's take a look at the mannequins. So the shadow from the mannequin, again, much different than it looked before. This is an actual mannequin shaped shadow. You can see his top hat up there. It's not just a splotch of black on the wall. And then over here, same thing with this shadow of this mannequin. So this again, looks a lot more realistic than you would find if went with ray tracing turned off. Back to the map called Clean House. And right away, the shadows being cast from the people are so much better than they were. Let's, like this guy's helmet. Remember what this guy's helmet looked like? It was just like a, a rectangular block on, on the top of his head. Whereas here, you could actually see the outline of the night vision goggles as they're being blocked, as the light's being blocked from this light source being projected down onto this wood. 
This is just so much better than, than it was before. This, this is the way Shadow should look. But again, you know, you are taking a performance hit by allowing your system to make these shadows look as they should. And in the kitchen, again, the shadows coming off the island and the chairs, much more realistic, much softer, much more diffused as they hit the ground. And they, they kind of fade away. They don't just stop because that's not how this light would actually uh, make a shadow look on the ground. This it would look a lot more like this in real life. We're in the embassy again, and we're gonna take a look at where the shadows are coming from all over this scene here with multiple points of light. And you got the soft shadows on the floor of this dude. You got the soft shadow of the chair. Uh, we, as, as people are running around, you can see the shadows dynamically changing around them. And then you got this table leg coming off of here, right down at the bottom. So the shadows here are, they look like they would, again, to you in the real world if you were actually in the scene being lit as it was. Um, again, shadows here coming off of this railing are, these look like individually lit pieces as opposed to just a solid wall of blocked light. Ray tracing is still a consumer technology in its infancy. Game devs are still trying to figure out how to best leverage it, and NVIDIA, to be honest, is probably still refining how it packs the necessary hardware onto the GPU package without making everything cost a bazillion dollars. When RTX first became a thing and NVIDIA was pushing it really hard, I admit that even I was pretty skeptical. It was more a proof of concept than an actual consumer product. In plain terms, it didn't do anything at the time that it launched because there were just no games that supported it. But now the question has to be asked, are RTX features an actual value add at this time? And is this a reason to purchase one GPU over another? AMD has been making a strong push in the graphics market with their Navi line. And I like those cards a lot for what they can do and for the pricing segment that they occupy. I even said in a recent video that I will often recommend AMD products in the mid market because I think that they are great. But when it comes to the absolute highest end experience for many games releasing now and into the next year and beyond, unfortunately AMD just doesn't have anything that can compete with something like this. The 2080 and the 2080 Ti stand alone at the top of the market. And with ray tracing coming to more and more titles, it's definitely something that you should consider now. It makes a tangible difference and boosts realism and immersion in the games where it's done right. I'm not saying that every surface in every scene should be covered with super shiny polished metal to show off the effect because to be honest, that's dumb and the world doesn't look like that. Things get dirty. But improving the way shadows are cast from objects or allowing an off-screen model to interact with a light source is an important step in improving graphical fidelity. So is it worth it now? I'd say yeah. Is it still really expensive though? Well, to be honest, if you want the best experience, yes, you're, you're gonna cost yourself a few extra doubloons. It's definitely a technology worth keeping an eye on, however, because as more titles become available that lean on ray tracing instead of on rasterization, it may become the norm as opposed to the exception. I hope you guys enjoyed this explanation and discussion on ray tracing and its current value. If you took something away from it or learned a thing or two, please feel free to drop a like on this video. It definitely helps out a lot. And don't forget to get subscribed. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.